Up till now, we've gone over how to navigate in the Final Cut Pro 10 environment, working in the timeline with tools, transitions, titles, and graphics, as well as how to apply effects. In this lesson, we're talking about audio, everything audio, from using your meters to how to view your waveforms. Plus, we'll cover audio controls, leveling practices, audio keyframes, and how to sync audio from two or more sources. So you worked really hard on your edit, you've got everything going, and well, it would be a shame if you didn't work on your audio. So let's take a look at how to work with the audio perimeters within Final Cut Pro 10. where are all the tools, and what are some quick ways to get there. So right off the bat, you need audio meters if you're going to be working with your audio. It's going to help you level things out and get you the desired levels that you want. To pull up the meters is really simple, and they're already here in the middle of the screen right next to your time code. They don't have any numbers or levels or decibels or anything on them so if you just click on them they show up over here on the right of the screen and let's watch this video and listen to the audio because we're going to change the level of some of these audio clips as well as doing some ducking and other changes so that they work best and are not distracting All right, so you can tell that it wasn't very well balanced. There was definitely clips with background sounds that are louder or maybe even unnecessary. So let's talk a little bit about where level should be. As a whole, your audio doesn't want to be going above zero at any time. Above zero, you get digital distortion, and digital distortion does not sound good. It's not pleasant, and there's no purpose for it. So stay below zero. You don't want to hit the red. You want to make sure all of your audio is down below that. Now, depending on what you're doing, voiceovers and narratives probably want to live between negative six and negative 12. So when you're playing them, listen to that. And as well, your music, if you're mixing those two, should be around negative 20 to negative 30. Then you could put voiceover with music below it. But like in this case, it's a video montage, so the primary is the music, and the natural sound from each clip, or nat sound, is secondary. So you don't want that to be distracting from what you're doing, like the cut, beat, or have any peaks that pop out and it'll make it digital distort, because you don't want that. Because on the final product, even a peak of digital distortion will not sound right. Now let's start off with the appearance, so we can get into editing these, so you can really see what's going on. And you can already see that, you can see the waveform, you can see each one of these clips. In fact, it's even visually easy to see which clips are louder than others. And let's take a look at the different viewing options you can have in the timeline for this kind of editing. So we come down here next to the magnifying glass and the slider there. I can click on this and it'll change the appearance of these clips. And so I can change it to here, which has no thumbnails. Here really tiny thumbnails uh, within a timeline, a little bit bigger. And here's even bigger, larger. Now view of the waves disappear. And here is just the simplest. I like to to choose this view here and if you want you can actually change the clip height so that it's even easier to see or you can just zoom in. Next, let's take a look at where you can have some controls. So say you want to do any kind of sweetening or any kind of work on the audio that's not going to be in the timeline. You're going to want to look in the audio tab of your inspector. Now, right now, I don't have the inspector open. So to open up the inspector, you press Command 4, and it brings it up. Now, it's already on the audio tab, so awesome. So you have the video tab where we did color correction and those kinds of adjustments, and the audio tab. Now, you can see here that you have your volume, so I can raise and lower the volume from here. I can also do it down here at the clip level, and there's a black line here, and you can see that it turns into two little arrows and tells me negative 9 dB, and that is also, if you look up at the inspector, what it says, and as I raise and lower those, you can see that they correlate with each other. Now, say you want to enable or disable something. So, to enable or disable, it's keyboard shortcut V. I click V, and it will disable it, and I can press it again to enable it again. Very simple, so if you are just turning things off, want to hear things at, without pressing solo, or you want to just see what something is like without it there, you can enable or disable it. So if you want to change your audio volume by just one decibel, and you don't want to get in there with the mouse, you don't want to go up to the inspector and type it in there, you can press Control plus to go up 1 dB, or Control minus to go down 1 dB. Every time you press the plus or minus, it goes up 1 decibel. 
Now, here's a good way of getting macro into your edit. If you are trying to work on some audio and it's in this little range and you're just trying to get it perfect, you want to get the timing of a fade or whatever you're doing perfect, you're going to want to create a loop. To create a loop, you want to enable looping. And you can either do that by pressing Command L or you can go up to, to View, click on View, then go Playback and you can select Loop Playback. So Loop Playback is already on. So I can come back here and if I press shift question mark it will give you a four second loop with your playhead being in the middle of that loop so if i move my playhead over here i press shift question mark And that will help you get a little context on whatever area you're working on. So move the playhead to the area you're working on and then loop it. Now there's a real easy way if you want to just level all of your clips so they're all about the same level. And it's just visually. So I can come back to this back clip and I can lower it down so that the levels appear the same on these waveforms. And I can then lower this one down. And it looks like this one needs to go up a little bit. And here goes down. And I can go up. Well, looks like there's no sound on that clip. I can go up here. It looks like I got a peak on there, so I should pay attention to that. And I have one here, and then I want to lower this. So let's take a listen to this now that I kind of normalized all of the audio tracks, so they should be about relatively the same volume. Let's go to the beginning and listen. sound pretty good, but some of the noises are distracting or they are so constant that when they start over, they're abrupt. And then we have a couple peak areas here. Let's start off with how to copy attributes from one audio segment or another. So you can copy the leveling. So say I have multiple clips here that are the same scene and the same setup. So no mic levels have been changed between them. So they should get the same treatment if you have a desired level for one clip you can apply it to the other and it's easy as clicking on that clip pressing command c and then i can go over to the next clip click on it and then i can go up to edit paste attributes and it brings up this window. So you can also do this with video, so it should work no matter what you're working on. And we can see here that all the audio attributes, I want volume. And if I had done any other things that I want to paste, I can do that, uh, maybe color correction or something in the future. But right now, so I just want to paste just the volume controls. I'm going to go paste, and it pasted the audio control volume the volume and pan, but the volume part onto this channel here. Now you might want to make a couple enhancements, some things that you want to change. And if you go up into your audio inspector here and you want to go and change and, and do different things. So like you can add some equalization or whatever you'd like here. You can analyze your audio if you'd like. So now you can change loudness and do background noise removal or hum removal. And then if you want to add any audio effects, you can go down to the effects browser here and you can scroll down to audio and there's lots of different presets that you can add here depending on what your needs are. We won't go into each one of those. There's lots of options so you can choose what is closest to what you're doing and make adjustments from there. Now what if we have these peaks and valleys here and I want to get rid of these little peaks. It looks like little pops that are here in, in certain areas. I want to get rid of those so I don't have those. Well you're going to have to now jump into keyframes. Keyframes are just points of interest that you can then manipulate. So you can use keyframes for every type of manipulation from changing color to what we're going to do, which is adjusting volume. Keyframes are good for ducking. So if you have some music you want to bring down as someone's starting speaking or someone just finished speaking and you want to bring the music back up, you can use keyframes for that. It's good to turn down hot spots like what we're going to do now or just to increase dynamics depending on what you're doing and we'll also show you that so right off the bat let's take a look at these couple little peaks let's go to this one here and I'm going to go command plus so I can zoom in and you can see it actually shows me that this is peaking so what I want to do to add a keyframe I can press option click 
to my black line here and I can put it over here. I can, if I want to put four keyframes and then I can just grab the two by holding shift, I can choose them both and I can bring them down. So now if we listen to this, you don't hear that pop. It's not there. Let's get a little bit more context. Let's try our shift question mark. So it's not there anymore. It's brought down to a level that it's not distracting. Now we had one more that was over here and I want to show you a different way of doing this one. So command plus to zoom in and you can see there's this little area right here. If I press R for the range selection tool, I can then highlight this area. And if I want to now just grab the volume bar here, I can just grab it and it'll bring it down together and it won't affect everything outside it. Now the one thing I'm going to now select outside, the, you can see that it added four keyframes. The problem is sometimes this ramp is too much, so be careful with that and maybe change your, your time that you have on it. And so now if we listen to it, so my shift question mark, there's no pop, no issue, and it's not distracting at all. Now say you want to select it a different way without a key. You can actually go down to your timeline. You can press I for in and O for out and it'll select the area just like the range selection tool and you can make adjustments based on that. I'm gonna done do that. So then if you want to do a fade in and a fade out of a clip, let's go, I'm gonna press shift Z to zoom out to fit. And I want to take a listen to these clips right here, these three clips. Now they all have a constant sound going on with them, but they are pretty intense. And when you butt those two up, you can really hear the difference in the cuts on them. So let's take a listen. I'm gonna go right here, shift question mark. So it works all right because the cuts are kind of masked by the beat of the song. But say we wanted to add a fade because it was distracting. So you wanted to gradually come up. And like in this clip, I want it to gradually come up because the song ends. So let's zoom in. Command plus. And let's take a look at here. I have my volume bar right here and it's negative 19 dB. And you can see just at the cut, there's this little like teardrop. And if I get close to it, it'll change my tool to this, which is two arrows going left and right. And that's the fade in tool. And it automatically goes there from the select tool. And if I go up a little bit, it changes my tool. So it's gotta be right over that teardrop. And if I click and hold, and then I pull back, it will add a fade there. Now, if I right click or press control click, you can see it'll actually change the type of curve or the type of fade that it'll offer to it. So uh, right now it's on S curve. I can do plus three dB and you'll see, yeah, it looks a little different. You have this gray area and this transition is gonna be a little bit smoother. Shift question mark. See, it's just not as edgy and you're not as noticeable that the clip changed. It's not making an auditory difference when the clip and the cut happens. Now, one last thing about audio that we're gonna wanna show you because it's very strong and it's super nice because syncing audio can be such a pain. It's real easy now and you can do it only though with one clip at a time. And I happen to have two clips that I wanna listen to. So let's just listen to this. I'm trying to think of I'm doing this kind of thing. So it looks like I'm doing a big so I have me talking there and that's just right off the camera. But then right here, this clip is actually the recorded microphone. $499.99. We're gonna dive into three main categories and it sounds a lot better. So I wanna use the audio from my external recorder and not the camera microphone. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight both of them and I'm going to control click or right click and I'm gonna go to synchronize clips. Now I get to rename the file because it's now making a third clip that's synchronized. So I'm gonna wanna say this is um, stand up, S-Y-N-C, stand up sync. And I wanna take a look at the custom settings. So if I open this up, it gives me, it goes what event, and that's the only event to choose from. And it wants to know what kind of synchronization. So you can do it from time code. So if you have time code sync on there, it can do it from there. It can do it from the content created. You can do it from start of first clip, so just sync it right off the bat, or from the back of the clip if you wanted to, if they may be ended at the same time. But automatic works really well. You can use audio for the synchronization. And we're gonna go okay, and it's made a new clip, and that's it right here. So if I want to open up this clip and bring it to the end here, you can now, I can zoom out, you can hear. Doing this kind of thing, so it looks like me talking. Well, let's pull up the inspector, and I wanna show you something. 
what it is, it actually has both audio now on, both the audio from the camera and the one from my external device. Well, the camera one's gonna have a lot of echo from the room, so I just wanna turn it off. So you do that in the Spectre here, and you just uncheck it. And now it's only- Come off microphone. of where you were for, for an- So let's go to a place where I'm talking. Able to read through it pretty well. The back end might need. So you can see that you can turn off one or the other, and that way you have just the one audio. Because when you sync it, it's keeping the original one and the one you want to sync it to. And now you know how to navigate all of the audio preferences within Final Cut Pro 10. In our next segment, we're going to be covering rendering and the export window.